Previously, we discussed how Bohr's model of the atom and of electron organization cannot be correct, so a new model is needed. In order to understand how our new model works, we need to understand something called quantum numbers, which are a set of four different numbers that are used to describe different aspects about an element's electrons. The first of which we're going to examine is called the principal quantum number represented by the letter N. Simply put, the principal quantum number represents the distance that an electron is away from its nucleus. The higher the principal quantum number is, the farther that electron is away from its nucleus. The other terms that are used to refer to the principal quantum number, the first of these is shell, which is the same term that is used in science 9 and 10 to describe each energy level where electrons are, and I just revealed the other term, energy level. In short, the higher an energy level is, the higher the quantum number is, which means the farther away that electron is from its nucleus. We can actually see energy levels represented on the periodic table. The structure of the periodic table is not arranged accidentally. Each period, meaning each horizontal row, represents a different energy level. So, for example, the first period, which just has hydrogen and helium, is energy level 1. This means that N for energy level is equal to 1. The second period, with lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, etc., is energy level 2, so we call it N equals 2, and so on as we go down. So if we wanted to identify the energy level that each element occupies, all we need to do is look at the period. So we already know that helium is in the first period, so its energy level is going to be 1. If we find potassium, we have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 to the 4th period, meaning that potassium's electron occupies the 4th energy level. If we want to find where aluminum is, well, aluminum is in the 1, 2, 3rd energy level here. Uh, we can do the same with iodine, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We see that iodine is in the 6th period, and going back to carbon, 1, 2, we see that carbon is in the 2nd period. So again, in summary, to determine which energy level an element occupies, all we need to do is find which period it occupies. The other way that is better to visualize electrons is by looking back at Niels Bohr's experiment involving fluorescence. So when electrons undergo fluorescence, or before they undergo fluorescence rather, when they absorb energy and jump from the ground state to the excited state, we can see that they jump from a lower energy level up to a higher energy level, like so, which means that the energy level of the electron increases, because again, it's farther away from the nucleus than it used to be. Conversely, when fluorescence actually occurs, when electrons recur return to the ground state, the energy level returns to normal, because again, the electron goes from a higher energy level, farther away from the nucleus, returns to where it originally was, meaning that the distance from the nucleus is closer, meaning that the energy level decreases to where it was before. In the next video, we're going to look at the second quantum number and get a more precise and accurate understanding about where electrons are actually located in relation to the nucleus.